Hello there team and welcome to another edition of Random Road Cuts here along Utah Highway 66 next to East Canyon Reservoir in the Wasatch Mountains of Northern Utah. Kind of a quiet afternoon so I thought we would take a chance to uh, look at this nice little road cut here right along the highway. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Random road cuts is an opportunity for us to work together, examine a road cut that we haven't been to before, work through um, the outcrop systematically, figuring out what the rocks are made out of, making observations, ultimately hopefully coming up with some interpretations and a viable story for the road cut. And so we've got some nice rocks here exposed in the road cut. It's always good to start with what we know regionally. We're here on the backside of the Wasatch Mountains where there are a lot of sedimentary rocks. Um, there's some metamorphic rocks exposed in different parts of the Wasatch. And as you work your way east of the Wasatch in different places, there's also some, some volcanic rocks that pop up here and there as well. We're also in a region known for compression. This is the ground zero, if you will, of, for the severe orogeny, a mountain building event that occurred about 100 million years ago where the rocks were compressed, folded, faulted, and generally just shoved to the east. And so we might be looking at some of the evidence for one or many of those things as we work through this road cut. So it looks like we got a little break in the action. Let's just start here at this end of the road cut and we'll work our way to the right or to the south here. So let's just see what we've got. We can first of all see the color here, this reddish brown, pink color, uh, really pronounced layering in the rocks. Some layers are thicker than others, um, but a lot of layering here. In this case, the layering is dipping uh, away from us and down to the right, which would be to the east. So we have some moderate dipping uh, to the east sequences of rocks. We want to first, of course, look and see what the rocks are made out of, what their composition is. Um, so as we come up here nice and close and check these rocks out, it looks like they're made out of grains of sediment rather than crystals. So that would take us out of the sort of igneous and metamorphic realm of rocks and into the sedimentary realm. And sedimentary rocks are often laid down in layers. So that's consistent with the other observation we made there. Um, this layer, particularly with my hand on it, feels kind of gritty to the touch, like sandpaper. I can see the individual grains just barely. So I'd say it's kind of like a medium grained sandstone. So when we think about sandstones, there's a variety of environments which might deposit a sandstone, uh, but it implies a certain level of energy. This type of sandstone, you know, would not be deposited in a fast moving river where the energy is high, wouldn't be also um, associated with, you know, tranquil, calm lakes or deep ocean environments where there's not much movement of the water. So we'd have to have something maybe like a stream uh, of moderate energy, fluvial system, could be a sand dune, could be a beach setting. So a lot of different options that exist here for this sandstone. Uh, working our way up from the sandstone into this next layer here, we can see it's a little bit uh, variation in color, kind of this brown, this darker brown layer in here. If we kind of dig into this, breaks it into really small pieces. Uh, but if I can get one isolated, like this little speck right here, and just feel the grain size with my thumb, it's much, much smoother than the other unit we just looked at. So this would be more like the silt or mud sized particles here. This would probably be a mudstone or more likely a shale. A shale is where we're gonna see uh, layering and the rock kind of breaking into little chips. So the smaller grain size would imply that we have a more calm, lower energy environment. So something a little more tranquil, maybe like the floodplain of a river, maybe a tidal flat, maybe a lake environment, but something a little bit more tranquil. Obviously, if we can encounter some fossils in these rocks, that would be a real uh, obvious tell for exactly how they were deposited, because if we can identify the fossils, then we can interpret possibly the environment in which they were deposited. So here we can see there's a alternating sequence of these layers. The sandstones are sticking out in relief forming these kind of fins that jut out. The thickness of the sandstone varies a little bit, but generally less than a meter, maybe a couple of feet or so. 
Um, and so we can see these just alternating. So it would seem like whatever deposited these rocks, the energy was fluctuating, sometimes depositing sand, sometimes mud, sand, mud. So we had um, sort of a, a fluctuation of energy levels in this environment. Let's work our way up a little bit further. A little bit slopey, tricky on the feet. And we're up here now where there's maybe a little bit thicker layer, a couple meters in thickness. And let's get up here a little bit closer and see what we can infer from this layer. If I can keep myself up here. Um, here's a nice little section here where, try to get the shadow out of the way. The grain size looks a little bit bigger. So now if you're seeing some of these little white specks here, the grain size is probably more in the coarse grained sand end of things, so a little bit larger grain size than that medium grain sand layer that we saw earlier. Um, alternating here to a little darker layer that looks like it's a little bit more fine grained than what we saw previously. And then again, it looks like it jumps back to, I can even see the white specks from here, maybe another coarse grained layer. Um, if we come down here just a little bit, just spotted something that's pretty interesting. This is the great part about random road cuts is the, the discovery, but also the dealing with the terrain. Okay, so what we have here is a really smooth surface within this coarse grain sandstone bed, uh, extends over into here, but it's exceptionally smooth. It's a little bit corrugated, so it kind of rises and falls, rises and falls. And hopefully you can make this out well enough in the camera. <sighs> There's some really strong lines running up and down this surface. Uh, and I can see it extend over to here, over to here. In fact, it looks like it even extends, oh, it's even more exposed uh, right here on this little face. This is a, these are called slicken sides. These lines that run, or slicken lines, these lines that run up and down the rock. And these are what we get along fault surfaces. So the presence of this smooth surface that's been polished and these lines indicates that these rocks have been pushed and shifted in this direction. Either this side where my hand on has moved down or possibly it's moved up. And these lines reveal the direction of movement. So we've got a fairly nicely exposed fault running across this and against bedding. So the beds are dipping away from us, but this fault is actually coming up and running a little bit counter to that. So pretty interesting there. We're getting some structures here in this outcrop. Let's work our way over a little bit. More of the sandstone alternating with the, the mudstones and shales here. And what I'd like to do is get, get a little bit closer in some of these spots, because that's where we're gonna see the good detail and maybe see some of these structures again. Um, there's a real pronounced line running down the rock here. And if we come in here close, get these branches out of the way, you might be able to see this a uh, little bit of a bend here. So it looks like we might have another fault right here. Pretty flat and planar here. I'm not seeing the lines on it, but it's fairly smooth. And it looks like there's even a little bit of folding coming into this. So it looks like we might have another fault running up and down the outcrop here. So these rocks looked maybe less deformed initially, you know, it looked like just a stack of alternating rocks of different colors and grain sizes. But now that I'm getting in here closer, I'm seeing uh, a lot more variability with the, the, a lot more structural deformation. The rocks are they're faulted in some places. There's some folding of the beds as well. Um, moving over a bit, looks like we might have another one down here. Try to get my shadow out of the way where this is a more um, 
coarse grain sandstone right here where the shadow is. And then over here, let's see here, I'm trying to get the shadow out of the way. Looks like there's a little bit of a fault right here as well. This sandstone is um, much more fine grain. There's definitely a contrast between these two rock types and looks like there's another little fault that comes up through here. Uh, pretty interesting. We can even see, again the shadows are not helpful here, um, some small little faults in detail here. Notice this little white line comes over and is an offset. There's a little bit of folding and faulting here at a much smaller scale. And a lot of times when we see faults like this, we'll observe them at a variety of scales. So you'll see maybe one big fault that cuts through the outcrop, but looking at it closely, you'll a lot of times be able to pick out smaller, almost micro scale features in the outcrop. Back up a little bit and kind of take that in. Yeah, so, you know, I think cruising by this without looking at it closely, it wouldn't have looked that deformed. But now that we're up here looking at it under much more scrutiny, you can see some of the deformation here. Another coarse sandstone here, uh, and then a really nice sharp contact here with this more red fine grained unit that cuts across uh, the layering here. Might be a little bit erosional. It does look a little bit irregular. Um, so it could be some period of erosion after this coarse grained light colored sandstone was deposited and before this more fine grained red unit was deposited here. Let's keep moving along. You can always turn a random road cut episode into uh, a much longer episode. We could spend an hour here if we really wanted to dig into the minutia. Some interesting things here with some of these sandstone beds that, that thicken and then pinch down uh, and then they stay thin and then they thicken again and pinch down. Interesting. And then, oh wow, <laughs> check this out. So as we come to the east end of the outcrop, there's a really uh, sweet structure exposed here. That's fantastic. So hopefully you can see these beds on the right bending and then they truncate right here against these beds. So it looks like we have a nice fault exposed right here. Got to step in for the cars to go by. So we have both a fault and a fold, and this fold here may have been caused by the faulting. A lot of times you can get folding that precedes the faulting. The rocks get bent um, until they break. And in this case, that break would be right through here. Um, or another way you can get this is the, the, as the fault is moving, the rocks, in this case, on the right side might have been dragged up the fault this way, which would make this side going up and this side going down a compressional fault or what we call a reverse or thrust fault, um, which is consistent with what we see a lot of in this area, a lot of thrust faults. So these rocks would kind of get bent as they're getting shoved up and over the rocks on the left. But let's get in here in detail and check this out because this is just, this is exquisite. This is good, good stuff. And I'm just having a hard time trying to keep uh, myself and the camera out of the view here. Well, here's, here's just, this is just sweet. Um, if we come down to the bottom edge, so the fault comes right through here and down here at this lowest edge of the fault is this beautifully polished surface. And hopefully you can make out the lines in it here. So not only is this fault pretty obvious just based on the rocks that are juxtaposed on either side, but this fault also has this wonderfully polished fault plane with some of these slicken lines on it that indicate which way it moved. And you can actually trace that polished surface. You can trace it up into the rocks. Here it is again, right here, exposed right here. Um, if we move up a little bit further and do a little bit of excavating, we can see it again right here. And then we can trace this surface 
up here's more of this polished surface here and then all the way up into this region so just a beautiful exposure of a fault plane showing the direction of movement with these slick and lines uh, as a structural geologist we would want to measure the orientation of this fault plane in three-dimensional space we'd want to measure these lines and which way they're oriented on the fault plane um, and that hopefully in conjunction with other faults in this area um, you can determine the exact stress direction that produced these faults. Um, so which way were the rocks exactly being squeezed? Was it northwest, southeast? Was it east-west? Um, all those things could be gleaned by doing some more in-depth analyses here. Uh, but a fantastic exposure. What a treat of uh, this fault and fold kind of combination here. Let me back up one more time. So there it is again, the fault we just put our finger on with the slicken lines, the fault plane coming up through here. My guess would be that these rocks on the right were pushed up and over the rocks on the left and were folded in the process. Um, hard to tell because there's so many rocks here of similar colors and types. So I can't really see the offset in this outcrop, at least just in the few minutes I'm here. Um, these real distinctive beds here, I don't see them on the left side. But then again, if these were actually pushed up here, then where would these rocks be on the left side? They would be down below road level. So those would be out of view anyway. Um, fantastic. What a, what a great treat here. Um, we're almost at the end of the outcrop. Anything else that jumps out at us? I mean, the light colored units are mainly these sandstones, medium to coarse grained. The darker units are mainly these more mudstone shaley intervals. Beautiful stuff. Um, and then we kind of get to the end of the outcrop right here. So uh, pretty awesome stuff there, team. Hopefully you enjoyed that little addition, that great little road cut there. Um, Thanks again for joining me. Appreciate your support of the channel. Hope you like these videos. Uh, random road cuts have become kind of a, a cult favorite among some folks. Um, working through, trying to test your own knowledge and skills, making your own observations as we go. So uh, leave comments below. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and appreciate all your support. And we'll see you next time. We'll sign off now from Utah Highway 66 in the Wasatch Mountains of Northern Utah.